introduction to nets is continued in video 3b. First we have to explain what we mean by a convergent sequence in a general topological space. Let X tor be a topological space and Xn a sequence of points in X. We say that the sequence Xn converges to a point A in X. If for each open neighbourhood O of A there exists a positive integer M such that for any N bigger than M Xn is in O. With a little thought we can see that this definition of convergent sequence agrees with the usual definition in a metric space and certainly in the Euclidean line R. So in the general topological space X tor, the sequence Xn converges to a point A in X. If and only if, for each open neighbourhood O of A, there exists a positive integer M such that for any N greater than or equal to M, Xn is in O. Now we would like to have the following true. Let X tor and Y tor 1 be topological spaces and F a function mapping X into Y. If Xn converges to A implies F of Xn converges to F of A for every sequence Xn, then F is continuous. But unfortunately this is just not true. Nor are any of the other three properties we mentioned earlier true. That is, convergent sequences in a general topological space do not determine the closed sets. Convergent sequences do not determine the topology. And convergent sequences do not determine compactness. The problem is that sequences are countably infinite and we know that sets can be much bigger than countably infinite. Whenever the topology tor on a topological space does not have a countable basis at each point, that is it is not first countable or does not satisfy the first axiom of countability, then sequences will not suffice. So we must generalise the notion of a sequence by removing the countability restriction. So normally we consider a set X and a sequence of points Xn in X. We can think of this, however, a little differently. Normally we consider a set X and a sequence of points Xn in X. But let us define a function G mapping the set of natural numbers N into X by G of N equals Xn. So really a sequence of points in X can be thought of in terms of a function g from the set of natural numbers into x. To get rid of the countability constraint, we simply need to replace n by a bigger set, which we might call d. What sort of restrictions do we want on the set D? Clearly, we need to be able to define not only sequences, but convergent sequences. 
we saw that to define convergent sequences, we needed to have an integer m, such that for all n greater than or equal to m, something was true. So on the set D, we need to have some notion of bigger, some kind of ordering. This leads us to the notion of a directed set. Let D be a set and less than or equal to an ordering on that set with the following properties for alpha, beta and gamma elements of D. 1. Alpha should be less than or equal to alpha for each alpha in D. That is, the reflexive property should be true. 2. If alpha is less than or equal to beta and beta is less than or equal to gamma, then alpha is less than or equal to gamma. That is, the transitive property is true. And now the interesting property, 3. If alpha and beta belong to D, then there exists a gamma in D, such that alpha is less than or equal to gamma, and beta is less than or equal to gamma. Note that at alpha may not be less than or equal to beta, and as well, beta may not be less than or equal to alpha. However, there is a third element, gamma, which is bigger than both of them. Then D is said to be a directed set. Of course, the set N of natural numbers is an example of a directed set. So using D instead of N, we can generalise our definition of sequence. Indeed, if we let D be the set R of all real numbers and less than or equal to have its usual meaning on R, then R with the ordering less than or equal to is also a directed set. And as we allow D to be any directed set, it can be as large as we like and certainly uncountable. So now we can define a net, a generalisation of a sequence. Let X tor be a topological space and D any directed set. Let G be any function mapping D into X. Then G of D is said to be a net in X. We usually denote the members of G of D by X sub alpha, where alpha is in D. This corresponds exactly to our writing Xn for N in the set of natural numbers, as we do for sequences. Before defining a convergent net, let us recall the definition of a convergent sequence which we stated earlier. Now let's define convergence of nets. Let X tor be a topological space, D a directed set, and X alpha, alpha in D, a net in X. The net X alpha is said to converge to a point A in X, if for each open neighbourhood O of A, there exists a gamma in D, such that for all alpha greater than or equal to gamma, X alpha is in O. Obviously, this definition of convergent net generalises our definition of 
convergent sequence. With this definition, we obtain the five beautiful results. 1. Let x tor 1 and y tor 2 be topological spaces and f a function of x into y. The function f is continuous if and only if for each point a in x and each net x alpha in x, alpha in any directed set B, x alpha converges to A implies f of x alpha converges to f of A. 2. A set C in a topological space x tor is a closed set if and only if every convergent net of points in C converges to a point of C. 3. Convergent nets determine the topology of any topological space. 4. A topological space X tor is compact if and only if every net of points in X has a subnet which converges to a point in X. 5. A topological space X tor is a Hausdorff space if and only if every net in X converges to at most one point in X. There are many other beautiful results, but the idea should now be clear. Finally, I observe that we have generalised sequences to nets. An alternative but equivalent approach is to generalise sequences to filters and even to ultrafilters. This is very elegant, but that is another story. Filters were introduced by André Cartan in 1937 and have been the preferred approach of many European, especially French, mathematicians, while American mathematicians have tended to prefer to use nets. I hope this video has been a useful introduction to nets. So once again I should uh, finish the video now, but uh, there should be a small reward for those who uh, did watch the whole video. And so uh, once again I'll tell a, uh, an amusing story. And it goes back to my uh, first days of teaching. And I uh, had a particular student in the class, and he was really an appalling student. He really understood almost nothing, and he was failing everything, and indeed he dropped out of the course. And I lost track of him for a while, but I did uh, hear um, that he'd gone into business and had become a multimillionaire. This obviously was a bit surprising. So uh, once when I was uh, walking downtown, and I bumped into him, I uh, had the audacity to ask him, um, you know, how he had managed to succeed in business. And he said it was really very easy. He bought items at $2 and sold them at $4. And boy, did these 2% profits really add up. <laughs>